Powell may say that the markets might be able to read into when it comes to how quickly they're going to be raising rates or what they're going to do with the balance sheet? What, what are you anticipating to hear? Well, this is a day when less is more. I really think that the Fed can't be in the business of throwing gasoline on the fire in the market. So what I'm really hoping he's going to say is that, look, our discussions about the balance sheet continue. We haven't reached any firm decisions. We're not going to be rushing into anything. Uh, and uh, we're going to continue with the balance sheet, uh, the slowdown of the accumulation of assets through March, as we've already said. So no change in the pace of the current tapering and no announcement of a, a speed or the start date for the runoff. Now, this will be in contrast to what some of his colleagues have said over the last uh, couple of weeks. We've had a bunch of comments from regional Fed presidents all saying things like they want to see an earlier runoff, an earlier start of the runoff, and a faster runoff than last time. And everything's easier this time because the economy's in better shape and markets are in better shape. And we've seen the consequences of that in markets over the last few days. So. I think today will be a, a, a meeting where they will reflect upon this damage that they've, they've, they've done, albeit unintentionally, and, uh, and try and calm things down a bit. You know, best laid plans, that's probably exactly what Jay Powell is hoping to do. But when you're speaking and when you're taking questions and, and when you have everybody watching your every move, um, I guess the market could read into just about anything that happens. Um, if he does exactly what you said and follows this playbook, how, what, how do you think the market reacts? Well, I think initially there'll be a sigh of relief. And then I think maybe there'll some attention will flip back to the, the economic data between now and the March meeting, the quarterly Fed meeting, which is when everyone expects they're going to raise rates. I don't think that expectation is going to change. But my guess is that the, the next round of data in particular, I'm thinking about January payrolls, January retail sales, and a, and a bunch of other upcoming numbers, they're going to be pretty soft, largely because of Omicron. But nonetheless, the headlines are going to look weak. And I think that's going to maybe scale back some of these expectations for a very aggressive Fed this year. I, know, I mean, I know we've We've seen expectations for rate hikes going from two to three to four to five, and in some people talking about six or seven uh, over a very short time frame. And I think that needs to be dialed back. I don't think that was really ever their intention. Uh, I'm sticking at three. I mean, you know, I'm easy with the idea they might do four. But I think maybe expectations have run away from themselves, and partly assisted by some of the Fed comments from some of the regional presidents. Uh, and maybe by the time we get round to that March meeting, things will be uh, a, a bit calmer and maybe a bit less hysterical. That doesn't mean markets get completely out of the woods. You know, we've still got some very high valuations on a, on a lot of tech stocks in particular. And, you know, the end of free money is going to make a material difference to those stocks, at least for a while, while, you know, earnings can catch up. So I don't think we're, we're going to go back to where we were, you know, over the last 18 months, where it's just been a steady climb upwards. That, that's just not a thing in an environment of rising rates. And ultimately, the beginning of the balance sheet runoff. But I, but I really hope they can delay uh, a bit longer than markets think and, and not do this until conditions are, are, are accommodating for them, where they can do it without, without killing the markets. Because, you know, after all, the balance sheet, uh, you know, it's their creation. There's no external pressure on them to start reducing it. These decisions are kind of arbitrary to some extent. And I think they can afford to wait because, you know, I don't think inflation is going to be as deeply embedded as maybe some people do. And, and I think there's a bit of room for raising rates, taking stock, and waiting a bit. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.